Hello everyone. Um, this is an introduction to my book that's forthcoming with Harvard called The Ecological Thought. Um, I think it's going to come out in a few months' time. The ecological crisis we face is so obvious that it becomes easy, for some strangely or frighteningly easy, to join the dots and see that everything is interconnected. This is the ecological thought, and the more we ponder it, the more our world opens up. In three short, logically sequential chapters, the ecological thought investigates the profound philosophical, political and aesthetic implications of the fact that all life forms are interconnected. It's a book of environmental philosophy and theory, written in a way that's direct, accessible and passionate. Why the ecological thought? It's an emergent awareness of ecological reality, affecting thinking across a very wide array of disciplines and influencing social policy in an age of global warming. Now the humanities must catch up. As Shelley wrote, we want the creative faculty to imagine that which we know. Using Darwin and contemporary life sciences as its root texts, the ecological thought explores a mesh of deeply interconnected beings, intimate, strange, and lacking fixed identity. The non-teleological, non-essentialist theory of evolution has affinities with deconstruction, as Derrida himself acknowledged. Though it's perhaps surprising that he never directly interpreted Darwin, Derrida asserted again and again that deconstruction applies to the life-non-life boundary, which is precisely where the ecological thought takes us, all the way down to the genomic level and beyond. Derrida and others are in this book, in the notes, but the main body of the text only requires fairly good general knowledge. The introduction shows how one of the things that modernity has damaged in its assault on the environment has been thinking. In order to repair thinking for an ecological age, we need a whole new way of imagining what we inadequately call nature. Chapter 1 describes interconnectedness with a view to the non-essential, non-identitarian implications of the life sciences. Chapter 2 radically rethinks what we call animals. If you read it, you'll see why I use quotation marks. Equipped with this knowledge, Chapter 3 explores Greenway's thoughts in art, science, philosophy, economics and politics. The ecological thought is up to speed with modern life, but thinking it fully means that we have to think past capitalism. The ecological thought creeps up on us as if a shadow from the future were looming into our world.